All right, people, today, this video, it's all about pencils. It's all about the pencils you're gonna need and what, what you've been given, hopefully, to be able to be successful when it comes time for us to shade uh, in the coming weeks. <clears throat> okay, today, right now, I'm gonna make a little drawing here for you of kind of a graph of what pencils are made of and how they compare to each other and what uh, why that matters okay so a little, a little graph here just like this here we go <clears throat> okay okay ta-da just like that <clears throat> got them all labeled out here you've seen possibly sets of pencils that have a whole variety of things going on in here anywhere from HB this is like a it's like a number two pencil that you'd use to take a test with. <clears throat> so like a number two uh, Dixon Ticonderoga or something like that. You know, we have those a lot around here. But <clears throat> that's what an HB is. You've probably seen these kind of pencils, just a number two. And if we zoom in here, you can see it's a soft leaded pencil. This is HB number two. Everybody's familiar with those. They're real popular teachers taking tests. Anyway, what you've been given in class, uh, you've been given a 6B, a 2B, and a 2H. Now, some of these others, they're more the extremes of what pencils will do and what they're made of. So if we get your pencils out here that, of what, uh, what ones you've been given by me is <clears throat> just like I said these guys here 2H, 2B, 6B. They are all about uh, kind of the three different steps, basic steps uh, of shading. Uh, so more on those in a minute, <clears throat> but basically you got to understand what they're made of down here on the B side of things and the farther you get over here Okay uh, The darker it gets but also there's something that's important to know here what these are made of It used to be that they're made of lead, but then this thing called you know lead poisoning Is bad so now we don't use lead we use graphite Graphite and now the other part the other component to the lead of a pencil uh, That's not lead is clay and clay <coughs> Excuse me um, Clay is what makes the graphite hold together now. Maybe you've noticed back to these Right here this is 2H, this is 2B, and this is 6B. You can see that the, that the lead here is much smaller than the lead in the 6B. Okay, maybe we'll switch them around so that they match up with the, with the graph above. There you go. So 6B needs a lot more graphite to clay to make this stay together but stay dark. Okay, so this is very, very soft. Graphite's a metal, and it is incredibly uh, useful in, in pencils, but it's 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 gonna it's gonna really get dull fast. 2B is kind of right here in the middle ground. 2B is very soft still, and it's dark. It's not so hard that it damages the paper. More on that in a minute. <clears throat> 2B. It's soft enough that you can erase it, it's dark enough you can see it, and it holds a point for a fair amount of time. It's a great balance. This is the workhorse. Your 2B is definitely the way to go. Other art teachers, other professionals may have other opinions. Um, this is just mine. 2H. I would say, from my observation, that the differences between these, you know, the step between, is not as great as the change that you see here. Going from HB to 2H is a big step, and from 2H to 4H is a big step. And these, believe it or not, 
I don't use very often. Occasionally I'll use 4-H on my watercolor paintings and occasionally to finish up a pencil drawing, but I don't even own a 6-H or an 8-H. They're just really, really hard and I, I think that the the 8H pencils out there, I think you just have to sharpen them once and then that's like all you ever have to sharpen them. That's, they're that hard. Okay, uh, we don't wanna damage the paper, so we don't give you these. But it's good to know that they're available. They're there if you, uh, if you need them. Okay, uh, moving along. <clears throat> so now, let's talk about paper for a second. Paper, has texture to it. Don't matter if it's been rated as very smooth or not, it always, all of it has texture. Sometimes you even get the texture of the table from underneath the paper. But we're gonna, we're gonna exaggerate this a little bit and say that this is the edge of the paper. Like if you were to take a piece of paper <coughs> and look at the edge, this one's folded in half, but you get what I'm saying. This, this is the edge of the paper and we've really zoomed in on it. Now I'm going to astound you with some amazing drawing skills. We're going to draw us a pencil here. I know it's really good. Looks like a pencil, right? There it is in all its glory. It's a nice sharp pencil. This is absolutely what you need to have when you're shading and when you're drawing. You've got to have a sharp pencil, uh, especially when you're using your 2B. But when we go into shading, because that's where we're going here, is this is where you start to be, just like what we've been using. <clears throat> but now with this texture of the paper, if your pencil is nice and sharp, then you're able to lay down the graphite evenly along the texture of the paper, and you won't get anything but what your pencil is doing. But if you have a dull pencil, so here's a dull pencil. <clears throat> this crazy marker. Okay, dull pencil, it's a really sad deal. When you color with this, or when you shade with this, <clears throat> uh, you're not gonna get down into the low spots of the pencil, of the paper, and you're just gonna lay graphite on the tops. And you will have the white here that's going to show through and that causes problems <clears throat> so this is a problem so we want to make sure that we keep a sharp pencil so that we stay in control this can cause and perpetuate some bad habits now the last bit that I want to talk about is some of you some of my students they like to use mechanical pencils and this is a really super awesome drawing of a mechanical pencil. Okay, and you've got this lead. And <clears throat> the lead comes out here, you click it, whatever, comes out. It's very small. What do we know about composition of lead? In order for it to be small and hold together, it has to have a high clay count. This has to be there in order to make it so that it will work. The graphite is still there, but it has to have a high clay count, which means it's going to be hard, which means that when you draw, if we were to press this into the paper, we're going to get an indent in the paper. And you're going to shade, and you, well, you can make a mark, and then say you erase it, and then you shade over it. What happens is it leaves that little line. If you've ever seen in your drawings, if you've ever drawn with a, with a mechanical pencil, those lines become pressed into the paper and you can't shade over the top of them. It leaves a white line. <clears throat> you damage the paper and that's not good. Okay? So, pencils. Super important. Keep them sharp. I'm going to tell you all the time, you need to sharpen your pencil. We'll be able to tell in your drawings if you have, if you've been using a sharp pencil or whether you've been trying to cut some corners. Uh, in the next video, I'm gonna demonstrate how this works. Mostly these two, I don't even use these in my classroom. What you will see when 
I'm drawing, I have this pencil right here. Well, Mr. Hilliard, this is a mechanical pencil. No, it's not, okay? This is a two millimeter lead holder and it can be sharpened like crazy and there are definitely all of these lead types that you can put in here, so don't be confused if you ever see a pencil like this. This kind of pencil is not a mechanical pencil like what we're talking about. We're talking about a .5 or a .7, you know, those little containers that have a bunch of sticks of lead in it that you use to take notes in English or math or whatever. Um, it's not what we're going for here. So there's your pencils. Uh, make sure you keep them here at school and make sure that you use them correctly from here on out.